<laughs> my name is Amy too and welcome back to TechSynth. My previous videos were all of this but um, those videos were recorded like months ago. I just uh, didn't feel like editing them. Finally I managed to. But anyway, haven't done this in months so. Complete text. I'm using the large model now. Not doing this one. Amy too was laying on the couch eating popcorn when suddenly her phone started ringing and she looked up to see her mom and dad standing over her. <laughs> what? <laughs> suddenly realizing that she wasn't alone. <laughs> yeah, you're you're not alone anymore. She got up from the couch and was just about to say, I guess we will see each other again soon. Yeah, they're your parents. <laughs> when both her mom and dad had left the room. Ugh, mom, dad, please come back, she called out. But there was no answer. Honey, where are you? Her dad asked, looking around the room. What? <laughs> what? Oh, we'll be home soon, she said, then tried to open the door to her room. <laughs> what? We won't be home soon. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me you were leaving? You're supposed to tell me where you're going, because I forgot, she replied. Well, then you won't be leaving tonight. Oh, okay, it was just a mistake. I'll be back soon. <laughs> what is this? I'm going to buy a new phone. I'm very excited about that. I'll be right back. Hey, wait, please. I need to tell you something. I know. I'm... <laughs> I know. I'm already very excited about a new phone. I'll be... That's one thing I never understood. People being excited about getting a new phone. But whatever. I'll be right back, she said. And she disappeared from the living room. <laughs> what? The door to her room hanging open. Hanging? You mean she lives in the attic? <laughs> her dad was still st sitting by the win kitchen window, looking out as if waiting for her. I'm excited to see what will happen next. Oh, look! It's her! He said. <laughs> so you were waiting for her. Then he turned around and started started a car parked in the front yard. <laughs> That's my baby, he shouted as he rushed to the front door. <laughs> what? I, I don't like it when people park cars in the front yard, or any yard that is. It's meant to be in the driveway. It was, and she was standing there, smiling at him. She looked like she was about to break out into tears. <laughs> I thought she was smiling. Her dad was so excited to be home. So excited, but his smile froze when he saw the baby in the backseat of her mother's car. And now he's got a permanent smile. He was about to say something else when the phone rang and he got off his stool to answer it. His stool. Hello? The baby? Yes, the baby. She was here. I didn't see her at the house. I was back. I mean, I was here in the back. Oh, thank God. Don't worry. She's going to be all right. Is she good? I need to see her. How old is she? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. 22? <laughs> She's fine. I'm, just, <laughs> what? I'm trying to catch up with the bills. I hope I get to see her again. The mailroom just got rewired. <laughs> I hope I don't need to go through it. He chuckled, but his heart sank when he heard the baby girl's name. What? What? She had been a baby when she was born. <laughs> yeah, most people are. 
She had a very small, barely a pound. She had been very small, barely a pound, and she had been very sick. That's not good. <laughs> well, she made it, so you know. She was a girl, a little over a year old. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought this was when she was born. <laughs> but still, no one could remember her name. The nurses had been so busy they had forgotten. When they finally did get around to it, they came up with the name Anna Elizabeth. <laughs> what? They came up with the name? Oh, it's not done yet. Okay. Where's the baby named Anna Elizabeth? He heard the nurse ask. And then you got a bunch of dots. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. A week had passed since the baby's birth, and Anna Elizabeth had become one of the little girls at the hospital. <laughs> yeah. She was just, uh, come on, a pound and a half. But she had been so sick, the doctors thought they might have to put her in a baby incubator to keep her safe from herself. <laughs> what? <laughs> But the hospital wanted nothing to do with it. <laughs> she had had so little time to learn that the nurse had had to be put in charge of her. She had slept all day every day, her head in the breast, and by evening was usually asleep with her little hand in her mother's shoulder. What? <laughs> what? She had never asked. Asked what? But one morning, one morning, when she was taken from the breast and lifted at wait what? <laughs> what? And lifted out. <laughs> what? <laughs> the mental image from that is not very pleasant. <laughs> there she was wearing a blue dress that <laughs> that left out the back of her legs. What? <laughs> it was her fa first day at the hospital, and all of the doctors were waiting for her. The new nurse put her on the floor, and then laid her on the new crib, then placed her head in that in the little armrest, <laughs> then turned off the light to, and put her to sleep. When she was finally left alone, Anna Elizabeth turned, turned what? Over onto her side, and her little finger could touch the pillow to her face. She could feel her mother's fingers. What? <laughs> Is her mother even there? I don't think so. Okay. Mother's finger, just below the top of her shoulder blades. She had never liked being touched, and now had never, never even felt her mother's skin. What? No, that's impossible. How were you born then? <laughs> but Anna Elizabeth was so young, and she had never been touched. It would never happen again. I'm hungry, the mother said. Anna Elizabeth smiled and lay her head in the armrest in the mother's shoulder <laughs> the nurse laid her on the new on her new crib but this one was larger and this one even more special this one had a tiny bed and a special mattress with white and pink stripes and patterns the nurse said to Anna Elizabeth, It's fine. Your new head is bigger than your old one. <laughs> your mouth is better, I'm bigger too. Wait, what is this? Your nose and your cheeks are bigger, and your mouth is even more soft and wet and kissable than your old mouth was. This is so weird. What even is this? <laughs> um... I don't know. Okay. And your brain is bigger. What? Okay, it's, it's cycling through just about everything here. Except for, you know, 
Uh, the, and your heart is bigger. And your eyes are bigger. Oh, you turned into an anime character, I would assume. <laughs> and your ears are bigger. And your throat is so big. And your tongue is so... What is this? <laughs> and your tongue is so big. You're so big that I could kiss it. <laughs> Wait a minute. This part here, whoa. <laughs> Thank you, your mother, Anna Elizabeth said. Wait, she's a... Uh, she's a baby? How is she talking like that? Then sat on her mother's legs, on the mother's legs, the mother, and held her little fingers in her mouth. This is starting to turn really bizarre. The nurse said, you're a big girl and all your teeth are white. So, so they're so nice and clean and strong. The nurse is, is really weird. And your little teeth are so tiny and nice. Is this nurse a pedophile? <laughs> you know, sometimes I think it's okay to eat with your mouth open because of your teeth. Okay, this is about as creepy as you can get with that kind with that kind of talk. <laughs> what? Sometimes I think it's okay to bite your mother's fingers. What? <laughs> and you're really big. You know that, don't you? And you have many long legs. What? <laughs> is she a spider? <laughs> and you're like six months older than your mother. What? <laughs> the mother smiled and Aunt Elizabeth was amazed. The nurse that I don't know. I don't want to know what the nurse has to say next. Okay. That went on for too long. I'll save this one. Okay, let's let's uh, try to get something other than creepy uh, pedophile nurse. Let's see. Okay, no, 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 no. As soon as I saw panties in there, I was gone. Come on. Wait, no, no, no. What is this? No. Is all that this thing can come up with is uh, is porn? Yep. Looks like it. Uh, dude. Come on! I'm trying to stop it to the to a spot where I can safely, like, not have to censor it. Um, I need to change this. Let's see. Amy 2 um, was climbing... Uh, maple tree. Amy, too, was climbing a maple tree, and the young boy was watching her in amazement. She put down a branch and reached right, her right hand out for the branch, but the son did not see her, and grabbed his sibling's hand instead. He then started to pull his hand through the other's fingers until they disappeared under the leaves. <laughs> The mother was then able to free herself from under the tree, but was in pain. I asked my son to please let go of my hand because I was in pain. So he let go of my hand and ran off into the underbrush where he was quickly tackled by his siblings, said the mother. They then made their way back up and began to play together. But I quickly got up and I called my husband to come down to look for me. <laughs> when I saw his head sticking through the bush, he knew what had happened and that I was no longer there, she said. What? Police were soon called and asked the mother to bring the family home. The mother and two children drove to the hospital and it was found that the eldest boy had a fractured hand, broken wrist, and a cracked rib. What? How did this happen? The second boy was fine and a little shaken by the incident. They reported the incident to a police officer who confirmed their story. How did he confirm it? Was he there? They reported the incident to the school district because they were not at the school to sur supervise the children. What? Who were of school age? 
They have now been suspended and are now allowed, not allowed to return, not allowed to return to school until they do. What am I reading? In the meantime, the mother is taking the school to t taking the school to task, claiming the behavior is not in line with school policy. What? I mean, that one there, I can hardly read this. <laughs> Amy, too, is climbing a maple tree to get some wood in her garden in Vancouver's downtown east side neighborhood. <laughs> her two-year-old daughter and boyfriend were... <laughs> the way it says that, it makes me think that her boyfriend is also two years old. We're home at the time. There was somebody on the tree branches, so we had to get off quickly, said Amber. We were still half in our pajamas. <laughs> it was snowing and dark. By the time the paramedics arrived, Amber had a serious knee injury, and Amber, too, was in grave condition. What? Her daughter's two-year-old had head and facial injuries. Um... The, your face is on your head, but was expected to recover. Amber said she doesn't understand why she and her children were on a tree, especially when there was snow on the ground in a freezing rain. <laughs> what? I think it was the wrong place at the wrong time, said Amber. Amber's house had been, has been hit before, a year ago by a stray bullet from a police shooting. What? She said she and her children always keep their weapons locked away. Her children have we have their own weapons? <laughs> and they are always on alert in their home. We have children. And we're trying to protect them, said Amber. We have guns in the house. We always have guns in the house, said Amber. She has also heard stories about guns disappearing from people's homes when they have left the house. <laughs> Gun thieves. <laughs> and she said she has heard some stories of people being hurt in incidents like this one. But what is the one thing that is most important? Let's find out. For... Come on. Important for her and her children when they walk home? Her family vehicle being locked in? My car is always in the garage, said Amber. No, it isn't. You don't drive? Amber said she has taken her gun since the... Wait a minute. She has taken her gun since the last incident, incident, but she said not many others would ever take their guns in this manner. What are you even talking about? She does not see this as an everyday thing, even the time of year. I'm thankful my family is safe, said Amber. According to police, Amber is cooperative with investigators. Good to know. Okay, anyway, I'm going to end that one there, and I'm going to move on to Moon. Moon was cleaning his car when... He found, uh, this is weird. Moon was cleaning his car when he found a broken mirror in the driveway, which he thought meant a girl was trying to kill him. <laughs> when he discovered the actual victim, it was revealed that she had left her mirror in her car to keep it from crashing. Wow, these guys have weird superstitions. A couple of weeks after being found, Moon returned to her ca car to find the mirror in pieces and her daughter locked up inside the vehicle. What? <laughs> the girl's parents were notified and she was taken into custody. Wait, what? Who? The little girl was named Baby Moon. <laughs> what? While Baby Moon was in jail... Wait a minute. What? She was visited by her friends from the neighborhood who promised to help her get get her life back on track. They offered her a chance to return to the world she knew and live in the home of her parents. 
as with many girls from pr poverty, the girls were wary of the offer, and the two sides failed to find common ground. Baby Moon was returned to her mother and moved back in with them. Over time, the kids' mothers developed a friendship with Moon. She visited them frequently, helped them during childbirth, and, play and played with their children. The mothers told Moon about their lives, and they shared many stories. One day, Moon's mother brought Moon a little girl. It was a different girl. Yeah. The Moon re and I mean, Moon realized that her life had changed for the worst after being trapped in her own car. At the first opportunity, Moon had the baby flown Wait a minute, what? Ha Moon had the baby flown back to the women's shelter where the g other girls were staying. Baby Moon's friends were Ooh. Impressed by her ability to return to a place that she had lived since birth. They told her of the good things in the neighborhood. One said she had been to, to a church for the first time and the pastor had made them feel at home. They also told her of their lives and one told her, God will give you a place in this world that is not filled with sorrow. Okay, let's try another one. Moon was cleaning his car when he found a dead rat underneath his car in a parking lot. The rat had been hit with a rock and was still alive. <laughs> then why did you call it a dead rat? <laughs> the owner of the parking lot had given them permission to park there. <laughs> but the rat was <clears throat> pretty big and they wanted it to be out of the wind. <laughs> and in parent is Dylan, 1999, page 48. What? <laughs> <laughs> the rat was eventually discovered alive and well in a garbage bag. The dog had <clears throat> a very angry look on his face when he found the rat, and <clears throat> he was definitely more aggressive than normal. And in Bear Dillon, 1999, page 48 again. He <clears throat> found the dead rats in garbage bags and placed them in the back of the vehicle. He did it slowly to make sure it was okay. <laughs> And then the Dylan 1999 thing again. The <clears throat> animal control officer <laughs> found something weird when he found <clears throat> a dead rat in a plastic bag and wrapped in tissue in the back of the truck. As the dog walked to the back of the truck, it stopped. Then <clears throat> the dog turned around and walked back to the back of the truck and walked right back to the bag and to the dead rat. The officer walked away and came back and said, you're not supposed to have these things in the back of the truck. What? A few days later, the dog was returned to the truck and he was put in the back and left there in the bag for 48 hours. What? <laughs> Dylan concludes, the dog <clears throat> has never interacted with a rat or had contact with a dead rat in any manner whatsoever before. Really? This dog was placed in a garbage bag and buried in a plot of land next to his owner's residence. What? <laughs> any more of this garbage? The, off the <clears throat> officer found a dead animal under a plastic bag wrapped in a piece of tissue at the back of the truck. One week later, the dog was returned to the truck. Okay, it's repeating. Nope. Gonna end it there. Moon was cleaning his car when suddenly a large ball of darkness appeared in the darkness of the night. The person that had appeared was Yang Kai. <laughs> he was wearing his black long sleeve shirt and shorts. His hair was a mess. There were many scars, but in front of Yang Kai, there was only light. And there was no darkness. It felt like a dream. Ha ha, I finally, I have finally found you! Ha 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 ha! As expected, it's you! The two had a friendly laugh as they looked at each other. Yang Kai had no idea what happened, but he wasn't surprised. 
The two had seen each other quite often in the underground world, and thus they also had a good impression of each other. However, Yang Kai was surprised by the two's appearance and his own, as he thought it was very difficult to find two who are similar to each other in appearance. Why don't you come with me? I can teach you some magic tricks in the afternoon. I don't want to. I am still young and my muscles are still not fully developed. Yang Kai stared at the two, then smiled and said, Okay, but I will let you stay with me for the whole day. Don't miss anything else. Then let's go. Yang Kai led the two out of the underground world. They arrived on the street, and Yang Kai took a deep breath and held the knife tightly. Why you got a knife? They walked together on the street, and uh, the people were already there. Then a big car came, and a man with white hair and a wide face opened the car door. <laughs> a wide face. Yang Kai and the two walked towards the car. The car was just like the other cars. There was a large door on the front. Wait, what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't you mean the hood? A door on the back, and there was a large space between the doors. Really? Yeah, what? A few people... Come on. ...were just standing around the car. They looked like ordinary people. And then behind the door, there was a small hole. A small person could walk inside. I was asked to wait, but I was really anxious, so I left. This was a well-built man, his, no, this is not him talking, this was a well-built man, his white hair hung down, his eyes were round, and his skin was covered in white. He looked like a person of this age. <laughs> he was very polite and calm. He stood by the car, and in a, in a what? In a moment, he threw a black box at Yang Kai. What? The black box was filled with a red liquid. Let me guess. <laughs> Yang Kai held the knife tight. Then he took out the knife and threw it. He wanted to try his knife again. After this knife, he couldn't be any more afraid. Stop! I'll take a look. The well-built man turned to the door of the car and immediately, then immediately turned back to Yang Kai. Yang Kai's eyes flashed. He had no hesitation. What? Sledder, uh, spilled a bottle of light bulbs <laughs> on the floor. You gotta give it something to work with. What? Sledder spilled a bottle of light bulbs on the floor, and as a group started to drag the furniture out to clean it, he realized that the light bulbs had all melted in the fire. In those moments, it just felt like God had taken me out of myself, and I felt connected to the world, he said. I wanted to be a part of a, I wanted to be part of a big creative thing and be a contributor to it. To be a part of something bigger than myself. To feel the weight of, uh, of it and realize that I was missing out on the possibilities that are out there. The group of people who helped this in, in the cleanup effort at the fire site including, included the, the uh, REV, the Rev uh, Jeff Schwab, Becker, the pastor of St. Charles Theological Seminary in Bel Belleville, uh, Robert E. Wright, president of the Illinois Conference of the United Methodist Church, and a representative of the United Church of Christ, said John T. Lutz, III, uh, pastor of St. Charles. St. Charles Church has offered to help in the... The what? I'm just curious now. In the recovery effort at the fire site. 
St. Charles Church has offered to help in the recovery effort at the fire site. We wanted to help, not in any way to, ma to take any credit, but as a gesture to, uh, of our prayers and sympathy, that the community will be able to recover and what has been lost, and to keep the spirit of prayer alive in the face of tragedy, Lutz said. Let's add that he knows of no other incident of churches helping their communities like this. Oh, really? Where have you been living? <laughs> okay. Let's run it through again. What in the world is this? <laughs> Sutter spilled a bottle of, flat of light bulbs on the floor, and everyone, including the young women with the light bulbs broke out into a wild roar. The girl with the light bulbs, what is she doing with them? Asked H.J. Just setting them on fire. <laughs> what? No way! Shouted the others. And the girl with the light bulbs was gone. She had lit some trash and had left the room. Then she had vanished. I looked at the young woman in the floor light. Wait, what? But she was in too much pain to move. So I stepped into the room and took a small flashlight from H.J. The room was very dark. As I stepped over the young woman, <laughs> I could see that she was lying on the, on the floor with her bare feet exposed to the darkness. What? Her ankles were hanging loose. What? She was naked. <laughs> What? I re did the fire burn her clothes off? <laughs> I reached into the suitcase in the corner of the room and found an instrument that appeared to be a small hammer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm seeing some weird stuff at the bottom there. Um, it appeared to be hollow. <laughs> so the handle could be used to turn the mechanism inside. Inside of what? I brought the hammer down on the young woman's face. What? what? Knocking her out. When I came out, she was on the floor, breathing heavily. Well, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Mom, I'm recording this. H.J. said, I can't remember where she is. Let me look for her in the dark. I grabbed the bag of clothes that H.J. had placed under the bed. <laughs> And we walked back to the room. When we reached the room, I saw the young woman's naked body. She had been shot in the head. What? <laughs> I said, I'll go back to the bag, and then we'll search. We didn't make it back. <laughs> the room was in darkness. I found the bag, and H.J. found the knife. The girl in the light was gone. The hammer was lying on the floor in the midst of the clothes. <laughs> As I brought the bag of clothes to the bed, it, it began to shake as if a person had entered, and the room began to quake. The light was on, but the girl's eyes were half open. H.J. held the gun on the bed. He's the killer! Or he would have been if the girl wasn't uh, alive. <laughs> and said, wait, there's a young woman in the room. I'll take the knife so she won't make it. I, she won't make it. What? He picked up the bag of clothes and began to search. H.J. Uh, H.J brought the knife to the bed. He grabbed the pillow. Let, let's find out what happens next. A scream came out of the pillow. H.J. <laughs> shot the girl in the head and held the gun on her body. She didn't move. Yeah, she's dead. <laughs> I'll kill her! Just kill her! He said. She didn't move. I stepped down into the darkness. H.J. turned and said, It's all right now. If I miss, she's gone. I I went out to the door and opened it. 
The gun was still in her hand. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Ending that one there. Okay, let's see what this one does. He's got a pet dinosaur. What? <laughs> Big Boy and Buddy attempted to land their massive spaceship on an asteroid. But were forced to... <laughs> forced to leave the craft by an uh, army of aliens who had been watching over the craft all along. Buddy and his <clears throat> gigantic friend, you make it sound like an innuendo, made it, to an, made it onto an asteroid, but they couldn't reach the outside world and had to land on the planet Earth to survive. Isn't that where uh, you'd usually go to survive? The spaceship was damaged and destroyed when Buddy landed on the planet, and Buddy and his pet dinosaur were left on Earth. <laughs> Later, Buddy had become the guardian of the Earth, while <clears throat> Gigantic Friend remained in the forest. Why is Gigantic Friend in, in double quotes? Because that sounds immensely like an innuendo with that. Buddy was unable to return to Earth in time, and <clears throat> Gigantic Friend was left behind. Eventually, Buddy had helped the Earthlings to escape from the <clears throat> Gigantic <clears throat> Friends. <laughs> the uh, Buddy I, and Buddy returned to his forest. When Buddy returned, he was shocked to find his <clears throat> friend sitting right next to him. But he thought they were friends, and he and was puzzled by how long they had been living <clears throat> living together. Why is it putting random stuff in double quotes? <laughs> Buddy left and found his <clears throat> friend standing nearby. <laughs> and Buddy quickly found out that his <clears throat> gigantic friend was a <clears throat> real friend. <laughs> Buddy was then angry and yelled at his friend. <laughs> but Buddy had to admit that his <clears throat> gigantic friend was a real friend and that they were a <clears throat> perfect match. <laughs> Buddy and <clears throat> gigantic friend decided <laughs> to start their relationship. But then they found out that <clears throat> gigantic friend had a problem that Buddy couldn't help them with. But couldn't simply help <clears throat> gigantic friend. They decided they could they they decided to get a date together. And Gigantic Friend wanted to date Buddy, but Buddy still wouldn't date Gigantic Friend, but he didn't want to date Gigantic Friend. And after a long discussion, they decide to get married. What? <laughs> Two years later, Buddy is in a relationship with his <clears throat> friend, and they were living happily together in the forest. One day, Buddy was going to go out with his <clears throat> friend to buy a car, but then realized that Gigantic Friend wouldn't be a perfect match for him, and <clears throat> Gigantic Friend was angry and cried and then left. Wow. Buddy went back to <clears throat> Gigantic Friend, but he was still angry and went off to his <clears throat> forest. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it keep putting stuff in double quotes? And returned later. And asked Buddy if he would like to become friends again. And Buddy replied yes. But then later he realized that <clears throat> Gigantic Friend would be a better match for him. And finally accepted. And they became a couple. <laughs> one year later Buddy was working at a bank. And <clears throat> Gigantic Friend was at the bank. And one day Buddy went to his office. But his <clears throat> friend had been there as well. And Buddy was told to go back to the bank because gigantic... Okay, whatever. That's the end there. Big Boy and Buddy were... I attempted to land their massive spaceship on an asteroid, but they were unable to stop the ship. What? <laughs> the aliens arrived on the asteroid and tried to abduct their parents. <laughs> what? The kids managed to fight back. Meanwhile, in the other dimension... The uh, planet's children were trying to save their mothers from the aliens who were trying to destroy the universe. The aliens arrive on the planet, a fight occurs, and the kids manage to overpower the aliens. They find their parents as the, gigan the giant mother of their planet is dying from her injuries. What? 
The kids tried to save their mom, but the mother of the universe, the mother of their universe, was dead before their eyes. The kids then find the children from the other dimension and try to help them fight back. The aliens get away with the mother of their universe, and the kids fight them back. After that, the two-dimensional kids finally... <laughs> the two-dimensional kids... These kids are, are flat. <laughs> They're 2D. Finally realize their parents are not all dead. The giant mother of their universe shows her dying son what their kids have done. What? He then offers them to come on aboard his giant spaceship. It turns out he is their own dad. Dad offers his child what he himself has been waiting all along. The kids ask him if he has ever wondered what it would be like to be a giant. <laughs> he then shows them what their parents have been longing for. His kids have made them a giant sp him a giant spaceship. His kids then realize that they are all grown up now. <laughs> they are grown up. They start arguing. One of the children asks why ask dad why he and buddy are a giant. Dad says that his parents are like him. He is all grown up. The kids realize he is not being serious and they tell their dad that he, ha he that they have all that they have been grown up. Dad then tells them that he has decided that he is going to be Buddy. What? The kids are stunned. Buddy and his kids are transported back to the universe of Earth and are then attacked by a large monster. Buddy tells his mom that he is a giant and his dad tells the monster to leave them alone. They are saved. And that's going to be the end of this video. So anyway, if you like this video, please subscribe, uh, like, comment, whatever. Um, anyway, um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.